Hello and welcome to Precon Decon, the video series where I deconstruct the pre-constructed decks of Magic the Gathering's history. In this video we're looking at the last theme deck from Onslaught, which is Ivory Doom, uh, which is this uh, black and white deck. Uh, so yeah, let's dive into this. Looking forward to this one because uh, it's one of my favourite from the set. I really like black-white as a colour combination. So yeah, let's look at a deck list. So we have 23 creatures. Two sorceries, six instants, four enchantments, 25 land, mana curve off to the side there. Let's dive in. Let's start looking at some of these creatures. So the uh, the theme of this deck is clerics. It's cleric tribal, which is really interesting, honestly. Um, I'm going to be honest. Um, I really like clerics as a tribe. Um, I, 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 I couldn't be able to tell you why. I mean, I really like black-white, and I really like the... Um, the relationship between black and white in the in the game. Um, I really like it when there's an overlap in what they have, and I really like uh, the concept of kind of like good clerics and evil clerics, um, and just kind of like you know creepy religious guys. Um, I just really like that's like a it's a trope I really enjoy. So uh, we got some like cleric matters cards here. So battlefield medic two mana. Uh, for a 1-1 one, one Cleric, tap, prevent the next X damage that would be dealt to target creature this turn, where X is the number of Clerics in play. Um, so, doesn't just count your Clerics, counts opponent's Clerics as well, which might matter. Um, a little bit disappointing, it can't prevent damage to players. Um, but yeah, I think this is okay, it's based like a um, slightly different take on Samite Healer. Um, it's basically fine. There's going to be a lot of damage prevention, because, you know, it's this it's that era of white cards... It's everything is going to be like life gain or preventing damage because that's basically the only trick it has. Two doubtless one, love doubtless one. I mean, I love doubtless one because like that art is just so good. I love it. Um, so four mana for a cleric avatar, which is a great creature type. Um, has power and toughness equal to the number of clerics in play, and whenever it deals damage, you gain that much life. Um, yeah, just like quintessential cleric card. Um, so there's a whole cycle of these. There's one basically like in each in each color, the each for a different tribe. Um, weird that the white one is um, clerics and not soldiers, but I'll, I'm really happy with it. I'm really happy that the white one is is clerics because clerics are a lot more interesting than soldiers. Uh, yeah, I just think doubtless one's really good. Um, you know, ideally you want its power and toughness to be like well, it does count itself, I suppose, because it is a cleric. Um, so ideally you want at least three power toughness from this um, for it to start becoming a real threat and start making like really big swings um, with its ability because you know like lifelink kind of not you know at this time not as common as it is these days you know so having inbuilt uh well, we didn't call it lifelink then it was spirit link um yeah would have been a big deal uh yeah i really like it there's enough enough gushing about Deathless One. I think it might be one of my favourite cards, I'm just realising. But anyway. Uh, a single daunting, daunting defender, so five mana for a 3-3, three, three, which is, I mean, a little expensive. Uh, but if a source would deal damage to a cleric you control, prevent one of that damage. Um, fine. Yeah, fine. Um, basically, minus one damage on everything to your clerics is... I th actually, you know what? Five mana is, is okay, especially when that's stapled onto a 3-3 three, three body. Uh, so yeah, I think that's okay. Um, so then we have like just a, a random selection of clerics here. Uh, so we have a single Avon Soul Gazer, five mana for a three three flyer, which is I mean like it's just a, a decently sized body in the air. Um, two and a white to look at a face down creature. So this is obviously in a set where like morph is a thing. Um, you know that ability is expensive. Um, I guess because it's the first time morph has shown up, maybe they didn't know how to cost that ability. Um, I mean, you look years later in like Khans of Tarkir, where I think there's like um, there's like an artifact creature that's like a one drop, um, that lets you just do it for free. I think or like only like one mana. Um, but anyway. Uh, but yeah, obviously that's like I th you know that's still fairly expensive. To look at a face down creature, um, especially when there there weren't. I don't think as many, but obviously like as the block progresses, we get more face down creatures. But really, this guy is just here because he's a three three flyer. Um, that's that's what he's going to be doing most of the time. Uh, three Daru healers. This is uh, basically Samite healer with morph. Uh, three mana for a one two tap prevent one damage to the beat up target creature or player, and it's got morph. So yeah, it's fine. Uh, it doesn't really benefit from having morph that much. That you know, being such a small creature. Ideally, what you want, the things you want with morph, are creatures that are expensive to cast. So with morph, you can play them early as two as two twos for only three mana and then later on in the game 
then you can flip them face up for typically a reduced cost, typically for cheaper than than paying from the hand. The the um, risk being that they're on the table for longer and they're and therefore vulnerable to removal. So yeah, not really. But again, like with morph as well, there's this whole kind of like mind game aspect to it. Like you you play a Daru healer face down, your opponent's like, oh, what could, that could be anything. Because uh, this is the set where Exalted Angel was in, and like Exalted Angel was like a big threat. Um, anyway, yeah, Daru Healer is 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 basically fine. Little boy, it's just boring, but fine. Uh, two Disciple of Grace, two mana for a one two with protection from black, and it has cycling. Uh, this is a reprint from Urza's, I think, uh, which is good. Uh, basically, means if you're you know having cycling on a card like this is really good because it means if you're not playing against an opponent who's using black, you can just cycle this away and draw a card. Hope that's hopefully more relevant. And then three foothill guide, uh, just a one one for one that has protection from goblins and it has morph as well. Um, so in this case, this is where morph makes sense because you know if your opponent attacks with goblins, you can flip this face and be like, aha, I can block your goblins. Absolutely fine. Um, but yeah, just a weird kind of little one one for one with yeah, not not a niche protection because there's definitely a lot of goblins floating around in this block. So that is that is still relevant protection. Um but yeah. Yeah, it's alright. It's it, it I'd still get the feeling it's here to fill space though. Uh and then we have some black cleric black clerics who are a lot more interesting. So Cabal Archon is um I feel like one of the win conditions of the deck. So he's three mana for a two two, one black sacrifice a cleric, target player loses two life, you gain two life. Um yeah, yeah, I really like Cabal Archon. I think I had this deck, honestly, thinking back on it. I either had it or I ended up kind of replicating it anyway by buying by buying singles, but yeah, really, really fond memories of Cabal Archon using that suddenly. If I just had like a load of clerics out, just to me like, well, I'm just going to pay four black mana and just have an eight point life swing. And that would usually be enough to win the game. Uh, four Disciple of Malice. Uh, so this is exact same as the Disciple of Grace, except it's protection from white hair cycling. Uh, one of the rares of the deck is Gangrenous Goliath, five mana for a four four. You can tap three untapped clerics um, to return it from your graveyard to your hand. That ability is a little boring, honestly, um, for, you know, like tapping three clerics, which might be kind of hard to arrange. I would expect this to come straight into play, um, honestly. I, that would make it a lot more interesting. Um, I mean, you could balance that by saying it comes into play tapped, maybe. Um, yeah, I don't know. And also, like, being a 4-4 four, four is not that impressive. Like, that's pretty small for a giant. Um yeah, you know, if it was like maybe five five or like six four, then we're talking. Um, but you know, it's still basically repetitive. Uh, yeah, reanimation. You can keep getting it back, so it's okay. I think. Um, just I think a little boring, honestly. Especially for a rare. Like I wouldn't. I I would be fine with that being on uncommon. Um, because it. I don't know. Just uh, yeah. Just it's fine. It's fine. Uh, a single headhunter, um, two mana cleric here. When it does damage to a player, they discard a card. And it has morph. Um, I think it's a one one. I covered up the power and toughness because I'm clever. I'm pretty. I'm almost certain it's a one one. Might be a one two, but whatever. It's fine. Um, having morph means that yeah, you can attack with it while it's unmorph while it's face down, and then if it's not blocked, you unmorph it, and then it does its damage, and they discard a card. So yeah, sneaks through. Same with cabal execution here when it deals damage to a player they sacrifice a creature and it's got morph as well so you can do exactly the same thing sneak it through while it's face down if they don't block it flip it up for its morph cost and they, it does its damage and opponent sacrifices a creature that is i mean like a pretty mean uh saboteur ability you know to get through and damage a player and they sacrifice a creature honestly that's pretty it's pretty mean i like it uh, so then we're on to white spells here. So we have a single Acroma's Blessing, three mana instant, gives creatures you control protection from the color of your choice in turn. Um, really good. Um, you know, breaks a, breaks a stalemate, just lets you attack out with your clerics um, or just lets you be very defensive. Uh, yeah, just really good. I think it has cycling as well, but this is a card I think you would hold on to and play. Um, has an astral slide. So... I didn't know that when I was... Uh, I don't think I actually had this deck. I think I just recreated it because I would remember having an Astral Slide. This was like quite a big card at the time um, because it was... Uh, so, yeah, this is the time where like white didn't have as much like uh, blink or flicker abilities as it does these days. Like these days you get like so many... Um, 
so many of those cards in white that blink or flicker. But yeah, so Astral Slide, three mana enchantment. Whenever a player cycles a card, any player, not just you, um, you um, uh, you blink a creature. So you exile it and then it comes back into play under owner's control end of turn. Um, this has um, also some very interesting interactions with Morph. So you have a, a creature face down and you blink it uh, or flicker it with Astral Slide. I think blink is until end of turn. Flicker is it comes back immediately. Um, so if you blink it with Astral Slide, it it gets exiled face up and it comes back in face up. So it's a way of like uh, getting around high morph costs, um, which isn't so relevant in this deck, but it would matter if you were playing, say, like a bunch of um, like expensive beasts, um, like we saw in Devastation. Um, but yeah, and you've got like a, quite a lot of cycling cards in here as well um, to trigger Astral Slide. Um, so yeah, and I mean, at the very least, this can be used to get like um, enemy blockers out of the way. Um, yeah. Because you, you haven't got too many, like, enters the battlefield abilities. I don't think actually there's any. Um, but yeah, I just, yeah, Astral Slide in the deck. What a, what a nice surprise to get that. Um, whether it really belongs in the deck, I don't know. But, like, you know, it being here is still nice. Uh, two Pacifisms. We know Pacifism. It's fine. Um, I really like the Sartan Pacifism, actually, with a, a Chroma. Yeah. Um, yeah. Before, before, before Avacyn, there was a Chroma. <laughs> As uh, as the prime angel waifu, uh, and then we have Sigil of the New Dawn as the other rare of the deck. So four mana enchantment. Whenever a creature is put in your graveyard from play, you can pay one cards and one white. And if you do, put it back into your hand. Um, yeah, super good. I think this got downshifted into uncommon in a recent reprinting. I think maybe like in a master set or something. But yeah, I think that's pretty good. Uh, just pay two mana when a creature dies. Just put it back into hand. Yeah. Um, you've got like quite a few sacrifice. Abilities in here. Um, yeah, I just think, yeah, I think that's pretty good. Pretty good rare. Uh, and then we have a bunch of removal. So we have a Death Pulse. Uh, four mana to give target creature minus four, minus four turn turn. You can cycle it. And it has. it's one of these Onslaught cards, which I really like. When you cycle it, it still has an effect. Um, usually a reduced effect, but like it's better than not having an effect at all, I think. So, yep, yeah, that's okay. Minus four, minus four is like quite a, a hefty chunk. That would take care of most things. Uh, two profane prayers. Uh, so this is I really would like there to have been three of these. Uh, so four mana deals X damage target creature or player, and you gain X life where X is the number of clerics in play. Really like this. Um, I recognize it, you have to jump through some hoops to make it good. Ideally, you want this to be at least three. I think to make it worthwhile. Um, but yeah, I just really like it just because I say I really like I really like clerics. I really like creepy evil clerics. Yeah, I just yeah, it's great. I like profane prayers, even though I recognise it's not a super good card. Um, but yeah, it could be potentially like a really big swing. Um, two smothers destroys a creature with mana value three or less. Yep, fine. Swap destroys a creature with power two or less. Has cycling. Yep, also fine. Phages pimp slap there in the art. Really funny. And then, oh, this is the other rule star of the deck, Starlit Sanctum. Uh, so non basic land taps to give you one colors. White, sacrifice a cleric, gain life equal to that cleric's toughness. Black, sacrifice a cleric, target player loses life equal to that cleric's power. So this combo is really nice with the Sigil of the New Dawn. You sacrifice your clerics, um, but you get them straight back into your hand. You can do them again. Yeah, I really like Starlit Sanctum. I think it's been reprinted recently in a Commander product. Um, you know, you know, obviously like the modern border and stuff. Yeah, super, super good card. Also has like really good combo potential. There's a card in a, I think in Scourge. So in a later set where there's a um, Daru Spiritualist is like this really kind of um, semi-famous infinite combo. Like, uh, so I'll quickly explain it. So Daru Spiritualist is a is a creature where it's like whenever a cleric you control gets targeted by an ability, it gets um, uh, like a toughness boost. And then like much, much later, there was like uh, in Kamigawa, there's an equipment called Shuko which is actually it works with the core as well from Tempest. Basically anything that lets you target one of your things for free repeatedly. Um, so you'd build up a cleric with like really high toughness and then sacrifice it to Starlit Sanctum and just get like a million life. Um, yeah, really like Starlit Sanctum. Also, those abilities only costing like one mana each is really, really good. 
Yeah, just super good land. I'm really surprised that's not the rare, actually. Um, and then four Baron Moors, four secluded steps, so more cycling, which is really good for Astral Slide, um, and also for like getting through your deck really quickly um, and just finding more clerics. Uh, so what could have been? So, I mean, like, overall, I do think the deck is pretty good. There's a few clerics in here which, like, aren't so wonderful, but overall, I think it's, like, pretty good. So I think a Feto Dredging would have worked out here. So this lets you get three creatures of the same type back into your hand from your graveyard. Um, really surprised that just, like, no no theme deck in this block has it, and, it like, it fits so well, um, given, like, it's a tribal set. Um, Nova Cleric would have been okay, so this is, like, a one-mana one-two. Um, and you can uh, sacrifice it. Um, I think it's pay three as well. And it destroys all enchantments. It just does like tranquility, um, which is like a really, it's a really fun effect just to have on like on a one mana creature. Misery Charm, really surprised Misery Charm is not in here because it has so much synergy. So Misery Charm lets you, um, so it's a charm, so it has uh, three options when you play it. So it lets you destroy a cleric, return a cleric from your graveyard to your hand, or target player loses t uh, two life. So destroy target cleric, not so useful, but like the raise dead on cleric and just losing two life, um, or an opponent losing two life. Um, yeah, I, don't, I really don't know why there wasn't at least one of them in here. Um, yeah. And then I guess other potential rares instead of the Gangrenous Goliath, because like that's kind of a little disappointing. So I thought Patriarch's Bidding would be fun. So there's five mana. Um, each player chooses a creature type and return all creature types or all creature cards of a type chosen this way from, from graveyard to battlefield. So obviously you would just choose, you know, you'd sacrifice your clerics, play this, be like clerics, and get all your clerics back onto the battlefield. Of course, like each player gets to do it, so a, potentially an opponent could bring back a load of stuff as well but i don't know i just think it fits the theme really well and also what would have been good rot lung reanimator so this is like this used to be like a really fun card back in the day like i remember it getting talked about a lot three mana for a two two whenever it or another cleric dies you get a two two black zombie super good would have gone super super well in this deck um also if you find a way of changing uh uh the creature type in the text if you change zombie to cleric infinite combo potentially um Oh no, you, or, or change cleric to zombie even. Whatever, either way, you infinite combo <laughs> with itself. Um, yeah, so Rot Long Reanimator, I think that would have been a lot better than Gangrenous Goliath. So in summary, uh, can you tell I like this deck? Yeah, um, I really like uh, clerics as a tribe. I think they're really fun. I really like the interaction between white clerics and black clerics. Um, you know, that some, some heal and some harm. I just think it's super good. Um, so I'm very nostalgic for it because I, as I said, I don't think I had it thinking back to it, but I definitely almost like recreated it um, using it when buying singles. So yeah, I am very nostalgic to it. I really like it. It's my favorite from Onslaught. But what do you think? Did you have this deck and did you like it? Did you play it? Did you make any changes to it? What do you think about white and black clerics? Uh, put a comment below. Let me know. But that's it now for Onslaught. I'm going to be back next time. I'm going to make a start on the Legions theme deck. But until then, thank you for watching and listening and have a great day.